Hey everybody, this is Spaz, and you are watching Comic Corn with Spaz. Uh, you know, I buy a lot of the stuff that everybody else does, like, let's say, Iron Man, or Avengers, or Justice League, Superman, Batman, things like that. I do buy that stuff, uh, and I enjoy that stuff, and I read it, and I buy the new comics. Uh, but when I go to my local stores, and I go through the 50 Cent uh, boxes or I hit them up when they've got uh, back issues uh, 50 or 60 percent off uh, that's when I really like to score some really sort of odd titles that that may not be on anybody's radar uh, but I find them enjoyable either because of the cover art because of the the story or uh, because of nostalgia and I'm going to go through some of the most recent purchases that I have. Um, and I just wanted to show you the kind of stuff that I'm buying. And I will be doing videos that focus on certain things uh, in the future. But right now, this is just sort of an odds and ends uh, video of stuff that I've recently picked up. The Adventures of Bob Hope. Of course, Bob Hope. Uh, it just tickles my nostalgia fancy. Uh, I love Bob Hope. But also because this this particular issue features uh, classic monsters on the front, like Dracula and uh, Frankenstein and Wolfman, and uh, that looks like a whole lot of fun. And coming up next, we got something really old here. I love to pick up the old comics, even if they're not in that great a shape. You know, I don't buy them to flip them or to resell them. I buy them because I like the cover. I like the art. I like the feeling that, you know, this was once read by some little kid some 50, 60, 70 years ago, uh, maybe even longer. Uh, and uh, uh, this is really sort of a neat little little piece there um here's one dazzler is is a character that was born um as a collaboration between marvel and casablanca records she was supposed to be the first disco star that was a superhero and uh she was going to be part of the avenger or the x-men and um she's not really a popular character but there was a lot of um a lot of issues put out this is the one that has her album on the front uh is there an actual dazzler album no but um, I do collect Dazzler because I like collect a lot of comics that deal with music uh, or have some sort of pop culture thing on it. Um, so this I had to get uh, this issue. Um, all these, like I said, are all f relatively cheap from 50 cents to $2. Um, and I love monsters. And I love really cool covers like that. Uh, monsters on the Prowl. So, and that's a really fun one there. Um, there's a lot of great monsters introduced in the monsters on the prowl series uh and uh, i was really happy to get this here's another really fun old old comic that's not exactly um politically correct these days uh, i'm not going to point out the uh character that's not politically correct but again I, I i like to imagine that some little kid you know giggled his or her socks off while uh reading this uh many many decades ago and um, I just like the fact of having, you know, old comics in my collection. Here's something interesting. Um, Welcome to Dingbats of Danger Street. Of course, I've been called a dingbat forever, so I had to pick it up. Plus also, if you notice, Jack Kirby there too, uh, who is the king of comics uh, or king of cartoonists, king of art, king of everything. He is the king, uh, Jack Kirby and uh, the late Steve Ditka, who just passed away recently, uh, are really the, the, my two favorite uh, artists at the moment. Uh, and that's like a cool little odd thing there. Uh, here's one that I found in the 50 cent box. Uh, comics were popular and Christian companies would put out um, comics. This is God Smuggler and there he is smuggling some Bibles uh, across a very, bunch of evil, evil men there. Oh my goodness, can he get those across? I'm not sure, but if you pause that, you can see uh, that he's quite worried, but he's putting it in God's hands. And I predict that he probably gets these Bibles across the border because he's God's smuggler. He's not God's wannabe smuggler. He's God's smuggler. So I'm sure that he does get those Bibles across the border. I also love Westerns, uh, and that cover there just fills my mind with imagination, just the cover alone, uh, and it's great to look at something like that. Of course, you know, I mean, it's got a UPC on it, which means it's not an old classic, but it sure feels like one. Uh, I love uh, love that cover. 
Um, I also like to pick up things that um, are based on either movies or television series. And look, there's a Welcome Back Cotter. There was a series of Welcome Back Cotter comics. And uh, there's Mr. Cotter and the Sweat Hogs. Uh, looks like they're dealing with uh, a member of the Mafia with a baseball bat. Uh-oh. I wonder how that turns out. Uh, here's another old, old one. Uh, it's not in the best shape, but for 50 cents, I couldn't turn down the Lone Ranger. I love that cover. Fantastic art there. And for 50 cents, I could not turn that down. It looks beautiful. Uh, also for 50 cents, Knights of the Round Table. This is an old classic many decades old uh, I haven't really gone back and checked but like usually if they're Dell comics and they sell for 10 cents or 12 cents they're they're at least probably 50 years old if not more uh, I'm not a pro so uh, here's something interesting the uncensored mouse volumes one and two these were actually I don't know if they were pulled off the market but there was supposed to be a third issue and Disney sued the company because the uncensored mouse is not put out by Disney. It's put out by another company. And what they did is they would go back and they would take Mickey Mouse cartoons from the 30s and reprint them uncensored. And there is some things that are not really politically correct. I'd say racially insensitive uh, to the African Americans. Uh, but in a way that old cartoons were that we now look back and we say, well, that's not really too PC. But this is two issues. That's all that came out, and I was very happy to get a hold of those. They are black and white because um, they were probably from newspapers or something, but uh, uh, they're, uh, that's a really, really neat book. I bought this Superboy uh, basically, uh, because it has Bonnie and Clyde on it. Bonnie and Clyde movie was very popular at the time. So I put this about 1968, this issue. And uh, there they are shooting at Superboy. Bonnie and Clyde. Isn't that wonderful? I, I, I really enjoy that. Of course, I enjoy horror. Horror, horror, horror. And I had to pick up the Boris Karloff. This was, uh, like I said, 50... Um, 50% off and uh, so I paid like two dollars for it or something so that's really nice and of course nostalgia another cheap little comic Huckleberry Hound and will I ever read that probably not but uh, the colors are really striking I've had a vision problem all my life so so something that's very colorful is very striking to me and, uh, you know, if I can see it up close, further away, it's, you know, not, not too helpful. Another weird little 50 center, uh, Love Diary. Uh, there's an awful lot of romance comics from the 50s and 60s and 70s uh, that um, were aimed towards uh, younger girls and um, teenage girls probably. Uh, interesting because, you know, I don't think that teenage girls will buy romance comics these days because teenage girls are, 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 are very happy with the superhero and the horror and the alternative independent um, titles as well. You know, like Paper Girls or something. Um, but there's that. This is yet another thing that uh, is near and dear to my heart. Partridge Family. And this is obviously during the first season because it's got uh, the old Chris, the first Chris, the Jeremy Gibwax on it. Uh, so I had to pick that up. And I picked these up. Challengers of the Unknown. Uh, this, the, 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 this team was actually created by Jack Kirby before Fantastic Four. Now, Fantastic Four had um, superpowers. But the Challengers of the Unknown were basically people that were just about to die or had just died and were kept alive to investigate the unknown for the powers that be and they didn't have superpowers but they're very similar in a sense to to um fantastic four but i love to get these for the covers alone and if i can get the comics for like 50 percent off and pay a dollar fifty or two dollars for them i'm more than happy to do that uh because i will display them because i love that art it, it just really pops out at me very colorful enjoy it very much um 
And, you know, I, I usually like things that are groovy. They're really groovy. So, of course, I had to get uh, the groovy comic. And this is just like gags, jokes, and little bits and pieces. But uh, it is groovy. And uh, I had to get that. Oh, my goodness. Now, this one is more recent vintage. Uh, there's, a, there's a company called Yo, Yo Books. Um, and what they do is they reprint a lot of things from uh, the pre-code years. And the pre-code years is, is before there was like censorship in comics. So I think it was like the mid-50s and before. Um, but there's a series of actual comics and hardcover books. And there's Weird Love. There's Haunted Horror. Uh, and a lot of great, great things. And, and, and they combine these. these um, they're like little compilations. You, you know, it's like Tales from the Crypt. And uh, Vault of Horror. You know, things like that where... Uh, it's just a bunch of weird, crazy stories. And as I said, they're all like reprints of, of old comics and they, and it looks beautiful and they're fun to read. And it's definitely a company that, that, that you should check out. And finally, last, last things I'm going to tell you about right now, uh, is I'm a big holiday guy, big Christmas, um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and, I, I love to pick up any Christmas related comics and here's one with a bunch of old things combined into one little book and I got that for 50% off a nice price uh, here's funny stuff stocking stuffer and that's uh, another cheapo there and then I love horror comics and creepy and here this is an actual holiday edition of creepy and again, you know, I'll, in a different video, somewhere down the line, I'll feature my Christmas comics, and then my horror comics, and then superhero, and then new releases, and all that kind of stuff. But right now, I just wanted to show you sort of, you know, I, I do focus on things that are off the beaten track, that not many people w would even think twice about picking up, but for some reason, uh, uh, they appeal to me. And like I said, it's the art or it's the nostalgia or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but but it pleases me. It brings me joy. Uh, you can sit there and go, spaz, go back to your music videos or whatever. But you know what? Um, there's, there's room for both. So um, I hope you enjoyed at least watching some of the stuff on my uh, um, Comic Corn with Spaz video. And I hope you come back and see some more because I'll be more focused and, and just talking about maybe like certain uh, genres or, or, or certain comics that I have. I'll, I'll even maybe every week or two put up um, a video of the new stuff that I purchased. Um, and, uh, uh, but until then, we'll smell you later.